Hi everyone, welcome to another Journalist Toolbox training. I'm Mike Riley, the founder and editor of the Journalist Toolbox. Today we're going to talk about a tool called Google Trends. You can access that tool at google.com slash trends or trends.google.com. Google Trends is a giant database of searches that people have typed in to Google. Um, it tracks only Google searches, not uh, Twitter or Bing or any other uh, search uh, uh, devices. Uh, it only uh, focuses on Google searches. This giant database has been around for years and Google developers have used it to improve your search uh, experience. But a few years ago they decided to make this an outward facing database uh, and now you can make queries into the database to see what people are searching for at certain times of the day. In other words, if I'm sitting there and type in a search for Donald Trump at uh, 11.30 a.m. on a Monday in Chicago, uh, that database recognizes that someone in Chicago at 11.30 on a Monday has typed in a search for Google uh, or for uh, uh, Donald Trump. Um, so it basically tracks what people are searching for on Google and allows you to narrow down uh, your query uh, based on location, time, things like that. It dates all the way back to 2004, the database does. You can look it up by country, state, uh, city level. Um, you can get very detailed with it. It has minute by minute granularity, so you can start with years, uh, over a period of years, period of months, weeks, days, hours, and so on. The database updates every three to five minutes, so it's uh, extremely current, um, it's really nice. Data is uh, <clears throat> that you see in the uh, uh, graphics is a normalization. It's not the actual number of searches. There are 5.6 billion searches per day in Google. It's a lot of searches. So that's why they have to normalize this data. So what you're looking at is basically a percentage. You're seeing a peak of 100 for a search term, and then you might see a number a few days later that's 33. That means it's a third as popular as it was when it was peaked at 100. You can compare topics to one another, you know, maybe political candidates or various uh, subjects or sports stars, whatever. Um, it's really good for comparing uh, search terms. Uh, it's helpful for SEO uh, in terms of headlines and keywords. You can type those keywords in and see what's being searched more. And besides Google search, you can also <clears throat> search for YouTube searches, uh, image searches, um, Google shopping as well. Um, so it's a very versatile tool. I usually use it for web search terms, but uh, you can use it for some of these other things. If you're attributing uh, any of the research you find out of uh, Google Trends, uh, usually it's, it's acceptable to say according to an analysis of Google search data and then link off or embed uh, your graphic. <clears throat> So one of the best ways to learn to use Google Trends is to actually play around with it. So go to trends.google.com and you'll see the search bar right here at the top and this is how uh, you search for certain terms and topics. Uh, it has some pre-built ones down here just to kind of walk through. It. This is you know made during the pandemic so there's a lot of coronavirus search trend uh, graphics that you can go in and explore and these are pre-built by, by Google uh, so you can find some really interesting stuff. One area I like to check a couple of times a day uh, is uh, the recently trending section. Um, and this was right after Meghan Markle had her baby. So, you know, she's uh, in there as a top search. Julio Jones was traded to the Titans today. We have the Mayweather Logan Paul fight. Uh, you know, so a lot of sports and pop culture in here. But there are breaking, you know, news trends in here uh, as well. And you could dig in deeper into those by just clicking on more trending searches. Um, you know, you can look at it from the US or global level. But the real power of this tool comes with the custom uh, graphics that you can build uh, by looking into these search terms. So I'm going to type one in, Hillary Clinton. And make sure you spell it right because if you put one L in Hillary, it'll give you a much different result than what you'd find if you spelled it correctly. Uh, and you can see here we're going to select search term. You can also do subtopics uh, about her, you know, Secretary of State, First Lady, Senator, whatever. Those are subtopics about her, you know, in certain context. Hillary Clinton. U.S. Secretary of State, you know, whatever reference that is. But we're going to look at just Hillary Clinton. Think of it as her names in quote marks, uh, her name in quote marks. You can just uh, select that search term. And here we have a search term for Hillary Clinton, uh, United States searches over the past 12 months. Uh, we're looking at all categories. It does have subcategories here. Uh, if you want to narrow it down to beauty and fitness books, things like that, if you're doing, you know, a product or something like that. We're doing web search, but as you can see, you know, you have Google News, images, Google Shopping, YouTube, but we'll leave it on web search. 
And we'll, up here in the top, we can do our comparison. So we'll type in Donald Trump. And again, you have to compare search term to search term. Uh, you can't do a subtopic to uh, the search term. So we'll just do Donald Trump. And again, it doesn't yield much here. You know, he peaked at 100 here. This was his most popular search day. It was November 1st of 2020, no surprise, election day. You know, Hillary had dropped out of the public limelight. So she wasn't being searched very much there. But instead of saying past 12 months, let's click on that. And we can go back and we can do 2004 to present, past five years, past day, past seven days, whatever. But custom time range is where you can get really detailed. And I'm going to do the full year here. I'm going to look at the election year of 2016. And here's where we get something quite interesting. She surpassed Donald. Donald's in red. She's in blue. Don, and she surpassed Donald on June 5th through the 11th. Uh, it was the FBI investigation into the emails. July 24th through the 30th, Democratic National Convention was that week. She also surpassed him September 11th through the 17th. She collapsed at the 9-11 uh, memorial that day, and there was, it became an international story. Election Day is over here, so the peak search was Donald on Election Day. Uh, and you can see uh, Hillary scored a 58 that day, so she was you know, just a little over half as popular in search as he was that night. And then they kind of trail off here later in, in November. Um, if you're ever unsure you know, uh, about explaining this uh, y-axis to people, um, you can click on the question mark up here and it explains the, you know, the value of 100 is peak popularity, a value of 50 means its term is half as popular. Um, so if you ever need to uh, you know, explain it to someone, that's a good way to do it. So if I wanted this graphic, I could grab a link up here at the top and give me a link to this whole page. There's other sub-graphics too, you know, and other topics. Um, or I, I could go in here and click the embed button on the graphic and it'll give me an embed just of this graphic. It gives me JavaScript. Or I can hit the share button in the upper right, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. It gives me the usual suspects for social media sharing. Um, now this tool is valuable not just for you know cool graphics like this, uh, but you can also go in and type in search terms and uh, see what uh, you know keywords maybe will work for a headline or for a story. Uh, so I, I grew up in Lincoln, Nebraska, so I'm going to type in corn huskers and huskers here, you know, Husker football. Um, which one is searched more? Well, Huskers is outsearched almost four to one, three to one in some cases. Um, so that, you know, if I was doing a headline and, you know, t putting in uh, some tags on a story, I'd want to make sure I have Huskers in there. I'd probably include corn Huskers in the tags, but not in the headline. One, it's longer than Huskers. Huskers is tighter, but Huskers is also searched more. Um, so that's a, a very important thing, you know, if you're thinking of what tags do I want to use, you know, abbreviations, things like that. Um, uh, in, uh, uh, in my tags, uh, that's a good place to go. Uh, so Google Trends, you know, yeah, take it for a little spin, give it a try, look at some of these coronavirus search trends if they're still in there. Uh, some really uh, helpful resources for you as journalists. Uh, the Google Trends tool is one I use almost every day. Um, you can find other helpful tools at journalisttoolbox.org. Um, all kinds of stuff here, fact checking tools, copy editing, transcription, data and digital journalism tools, social media. Um, First Amendment, one of our most popular pages is, is the public records page. Um, so take advantage of this website. It's free. It's linked off of spj.org, the Society of Professional Journalists, where the Journalist Toolbox resides, or you can go to journalisttoolbox.org. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.